Hello, you've reached the Provincial Health Services Authority telephone line for medical assistance in dying. The countdown to Joni Cowie's death has begun. If you call the number on the government website, they will provide doctors that will sign off for you. Like many disabled Canadians, she is stuck in a cycle of poverty and despair. It's no hope for anybody in Ontario. That's a good boy. So she's planning to end her life Up. with the government's help. They can have me dead in 90 days. That's what I was told. Like in my case, the problem is not really the disability. It is the poverty. Les Landry is in the same position, wanting to live, but seeing no other option than death. These two are for my asthma. This is for my COPD. Since when did we stop looking at the value of human life in this country? It's a question people with disabilities and their advocates ask constantly. We can organize medical assistance in dying in approximately two weeks in a very organized and efficient manner. Yet, it is so difficult to get my patients the social support that they need to live well. That is morally distressing. From her home in Windsor, Ontario, Joni deals with the grinding financial pain of living in poverty during an affordability crisis, compounded by the physical pain of disability. I have severe, severe asthma that's turned into COPD and Guillain-Barre syndrome, as well as cancer. I also just recently fractured my back. I'm tired a lot. The pain is excruciating. He told me. Joni lives with her three dogs and her daughter, who is also disabled. They have no family support, so they have to find a way to survive on $1,228 a month Joni gets from Ontario's Disability Support Program, plus a few hundred dollars more for her daughter. Even with subsidized housing, it's not nearly enough. We have about $59 left to buy groceries in a month because our home, we have to have housing insurance, rent, hydro is high, gas is high. I get angry at people who say you need to budget better because I just want to say to them, go to hell. I really do, and I don't swear very often. Here's the thing, Joni's financial struggle is not at all unique. During the pandemic, the government decided working Canadians needed at least $2,000 a month to live, while the disabled were forced to get by on much less. They had served, but not for people with disabilities. People with disabilities have been put on the back burner and nobody gives a damn about them. Disability supports vary from province to province. On the low end, imagine surviving on $705 a month, as people with disabilities do in New Brunswick. Or how about living on $1,358 a month in Vancouver, where the average rent for a one-bedroom apartment is $2,500. The most recent numbers from Statistics Canada reveal 41% of Canadians living under the poverty line have a disability. That's more than 1.5 million people about the population of Montreal. Our social assistance rates place people with disabilities below the poverty line, approximately 25% below the poverty line. So honestly, this is legislated poverty for people with disabilities. This is the kind of care that's needed. Dr. Nahid Dasani is a palliative care physician and professor of community and family medicine at the University of Toronto. He gave us a tour of the East Toronto neighborhood where he offers street-based care, often to people with disabilities living in poverty. Many of the people we care for are dealing with serious illnesses, but often they're very sick because of their social circumstances. There are significant health outcomes if we don't address those issues and treat those issues. The result, Dr. Dosani is increasingly discussing MAID, or medical assistance in dying, with his patients. Not necessarily because they want to die, but because they see no way out of the twin miseries of poverty and disability. When people are living in such a situation where they're structurally placed in poverty, is medical assistance in dying really a choice or is it coercion? Under Canada's first medical assistance in dying law passed in 2016, 
a person's death had to be, quote, reasonably foreseeable to be approved. Last year, eligibility was expanded to people who have a, quote, serious and irreversible illness or disability that causes intolerable suffering. Now, people like Joni qualify. On social media, it's a constant conversation. But almost everyone is like, yeah, I'm just kind of waiting to see, you know, how it is in six months. I'm gonna see how it is in eight months. We'd like to make it to a year, but I don't think we're gonna make it to a year. I cried a lot at night. I usually stay up a lot at night. I pray, I pray a lot. In Medicine Hat, Alberta, Les Landry is contemplating maid and leaving behind his beloved service dog, Annie. Les has been growing steadily poorer and more desperate since his career as a truck driver was derailed more than a decade ago. Disability can happen to anyone at any time. I was doing good, I was making good money, 80, 85 grand a year. I developed a hernia and then that's when the surgery happened. That's when the blood pressure went out of control. That's when I developed epilepsy and the three mini strokes and the things just fell apart. Good girl. On Alberta's disability program, Les was receiving $1,685 a month, plus benefits for his service dog, special diet and medications. This is my blister pack. Along with timely donations from strangers on Twitter, he was just scraping by. That's for a week. Then in May, he turned 65. In the bureaucratic shuffle, he was transitioned from disability to senior status and actually lost some benefits. I am no longer a person with a disability. I'm a senior citizen in poverty. In the past, Les planned ahead, made extra payments on his bills, but he's no longer able to do that and is forced to rely even more on donations. The big picture is if I didn't plan ahead to make them extra payments, I'd probably be homeless. I cannot live the rest of my life on the goodwill of friends on Twitter. No. Les, Joni, and many other disabled Canadians who share their stories with Global News say they aren't against medically assisted dying in principle, but they say Canada should have raised disability benefits before expanding access to it. Having disabilities and living in pain. They targeted people with disabilities and people with chronic pain. And I said, if you're going to do that, have a responsibility to also lift the benefits and increase the quality of life for people with disabilities, the people you are targeting. We should prioritize health care and social support that promotes the human rights of all. Trudeau Lemons is a professor of health law and policy at the University of Toronto. He has been warning the Canadian government for years that the speed and scope of its plans to expand access to assisted dying was a violation of the rights of disabled Canadians. Out of a misplaced form of compassion, we think that persons with disabilities have a reason to end their life uh, earlier than others. This basically is, is, uh, is discriminatory. Only about a dozen countries have legalized doctor-assisted death. Lemon says the few that allow it for patients who aren't terminally ill have stronger protections than Canada against coercion and suffering caused by poverty. In my view, we're actually failing to implement even uh, some of the most basic safeguards that, that at, least, at least exist in those countries. Belgium and the Netherlands have had assisted dying since the early 2000s. In both countries, doctors are forbidden from suggesting it to patients. They must also exhaust all other options before approving it. We're getting rid of this idea that we'll first try the least interventionist measures I find that actually quite extraordinary that we've forgotten, I think, the seriousness of ending the life of a person as a measure to relieve their suffering. As Canada has opened up eligibility, the number of cases has shot up. In 2021, more than 10,000 Canadians opted for a medically assisted death. That's a 32% increase from the year before. The numbers have increased faster here than any other country where it's legal including the Netherlands and Belgium. So even though those countries have been practicing medical assistance and dying or euthanasia for 20 years, they are at the rate that we have after only a couple of years. There is no way of knowing how many of those deaths could have been avoided with the right supports, but we know there are some. Recently in Canada, an Ontario woman suffering from chemical sensitivities reportedly opted for a medically assisted death because she couldn't afford appropriate housing. And in another troubling case, a Veterans Affairs employee suggested it to a veteran who was seeking help for PTSD and a traumatic brain injury. 
often I hear arguments, well, this is not impacting that many people. But you know what? If it affects one person, that's way too many people. And we need to do something about that. The controversy surrounding MAID is not going away. In March, the government plans to expand access yet again to include people with mental illnesses. More support may be coming. A new Canada disability benefit is before Parliament for the second time. It was dropped last year when a federal election was called. Sit. But Joni and Les are skeptical. We already know seniors will not be eligible. This government has a history on how they treat people with disabilities. 18 to 65, well, that ex excludes me and anybody in my, in my situation. <laughs> so sorry. Please speak up to your member of parliament, to your members of provincial parliament, because people with disabilities don't ask for their disability. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I just can't see me living like this for the rest of my life.